Welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> yeah, we're back again today doing a Doodle Bastard video. It's amazing to me just how many fans I have of this little bike. Uh, it's not quite as many as the Volkswagen fans of mine, but the fans that love this thing really love it and really have been asking for a lot more of it and for longer videos. So here you go, you guys, another Doodle Bastard video. It's about time I'm putting this thing back together and it's costing me a lot of money this time around, but you'll get to see in this video because I've replaced a lot of things and it just took a, a whole lot of stuff just to get it going. We're going to have some fun on this thing and we're probably going to do another speed contest on a different road where we have a little more space. So watch for that coming up. Now you'll notice in this video that I changed clothes a few times and I go from being very, very sweaty to all of a sudden very dry and covered in a sweater. That's because this video was filmed over two days. The first day was actually over 80 degrees and highly humid. The next day it was barely above freezing temperatures, but uh, that's living on the Gulf Coast for you. <laughs> Licky, likey, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to pluck the dingle belly, and let's go ahead and jump onto this project and see where we wind up. Well, on the doodle bastard here, these bearings I discovered were all but seized. These things are just really, really hard to turn. And I remember that from last year, but since it's been sitting, it's they're just a lot worse than that even. But this is a blind hole bearing puller, and what it allows you to do is run it into the bearing like this, and it expands the little tangs open on the inside of the bearing. Oh, psh, that one actually just popped right out. <laughs> Usually you would um, put the slide hammer on it and uh, pull it out that way. <laughs> that one came right out with almost no effort at all. Okay, well, uh, that makes my life a whole lot easier. Well, we've got a new bearing. I actually picked these up off of uh, Amazon, which was rather surprising to me. It's a 10-pack. I only needed four. But it was either four for $20 with uh, something like eight or nine-day shipping, or a 10-pack for $12.95 with two days shipping for free. So, no brainer, I got the 10-pack. All right, well, need to put that new bearing on. There it is. Just gonna inspect to make sure it is indeed the right size. Looks to be. Then, a lot easier here if I had to set up with a workbench, but I don't. Some grease on this, just a little bit. I mean, you don't need to, to go crazy on this thing here. Just a little bit, and a little bit down inside the bore. Some people on YouTube before have told me in the past, man, you're supposed to just Put it in dry. I don't know why you're greasing them. Are you a moron? Now, <laughs> tell your old lady that and see if uh, that works for her too. But needless to say, if this thing does get moisture on it and decides it's gonna rust, a steel bearing on a steel wheel, I can't believe that just went in like that, I didn't even have to beat it in, is going to seize. In this case, I was lucky enough that it did not, but yeah, that went right in. I'm worried that if I turn this upside down, it's gonna fall out. Now we gotta do the same thing to the other side here. This one is, geez, that one's in worse shape. This is why the Doodle Bastard was always so heavy to push. Never made sense to me. I always thought it was just the engine was dragging a little bit. And uh, I don't think that's the case on here at all. Well, let's see if this one comes out. Now again, these are the uh, little tangs that expand. When you tighten this up, this spreads open and it locks on that bearing. Whereas when I loosen it, it contracts and the bearing comes off. And that one's junk gone. Put this in here, tighten this down. Yeah, that one's not coming out quite so easy. Alright. It's like this. Now, ordinarily I would stick a wheel in a vise or something, but I think this is going to come out a lot easier than that. Yep, there it is. Now pull it on up. Alright. I'm gonna jam us a new bearing in there. I gotta open up a second one because I didn't prepare ahead of time for that. Shame on me, duck man. That makes for a lousy video because you bore the crap out of us with all the extra stuff that you gotta do while we're sitting here and just waiting for you because you don't edit out all that extra crap. Damn it, duck man, you're such a moron. <laughs> all right, a little bit more grease again. Any kind of grease, it don't matter if it's axle grease, molly grease, white grease. Just get something in there because in this case it's actually being used as a, uh, a rust preventative, not so much a lubricant. There are also spacers in there, but because we removed one side at a time as opposed to both at the same time, the spacers never came out. 
so they're still in there. And that one almost presses in by hand. Almost. Okay, now we've prepared for that. We've grabbed a tool. We're coming back with here, which is nothing more than a socket. And uh, it's minor abuse of a tool. It's really not what a socket is meant for. But this one is a um, imperial standard, not a metric one. So <laughs> I guess it really doesn't matter too much for me as a Volkswagen guy, right? Anyway, put this up on here and there it is, bottomed out. Okay, this wheel's ready to go back on. That's all there is to it. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the front wheel also, but now we do have a new set of bearings. Whoa, except for the one that just fell out. So did the spacer. Well, ha, ain't that annoying. <laughs> Damn it, Duckman, you never leave the bloopers in. Yeah, this one's got left in. We're going to leave that one in. Well, it don't matter so much that it's falling out. Because, of course, once you bolt this together, everything gets sandwiched in the, uh, well, I guess it would be the rear swing arm on this uh, doodle bastard, though. It's just the frame. This is a hardtail. All right, there it is. And for those of you that don't know, this piece was actually made by A-Bomb 79 many years ago for me to get this sprocket adapted to this wheel. Because this is a uh, 420 chain or something, if I'm not mistaken. And that was the only chain that was going to work with this engine. I couldn't put the old uh, Doodle Bastard chain on. It was entirely too small. All right. Well, we're going to get this wheel put on, and then we're going to swap out the bearings on the front one. And I can guarantee you that... When I put this wheel in, if that bearing keeps popping out so easily, it's going to try to do that while I'm putting it on here also. So I'm going to be extra delicate. And I've got two spacers, a big one and a small one. The big one went on the side with the chain, which makes logical sense because it needs extra clearance for the chain. Here's that right. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't remember how it went now. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like the smaller one went on the side with the chain because the chain has its own clearance. Okay, good. Again, grease everything up just a little bit. And this is more for rust preventative than it really is for lubrication because this is a non-moving part. Get the spacer put on here, get it started. Lift our wheel into position. Inside that wheel is the spacer, and the spacer can fall out of alignment. So sometimes it's a little tricky to get that on there, but it went in. All right, now that it's that far, we'll grease the rest of it. I didn't grease that before, of course, because I didn't need it all over my hands. All right, here we go. Got a regular over here, give it a wipe. Got our spacer for the other side. I know you guys can't see this too bad, I'm sorry. <clears throat> this is uh, always the hard spot. The axle came through though. There it goes, down through the spacer and through the frame. Very nice. All right, I'm not putting the pin in it yet. What the hell is that? That's not anything to do with this. Okay, get it out of here. <clears throat> There's our castellated nut, and I'm not actually gonna tighten this axle down yet because at this point I still have to put the chain back on. For whatever reason, last year when I took this apart, I took the chain off, and I don't even know why. <laughs> but, I'll be able to put the chain back on and get it adjusted properly. There's some uh, tensioners that I put on the sides here that are from a Pook moped that got the job going on this thing. All right, that looks good. Let's hit the front. All right, the front wheel is currently on there, but those bearings are still shot. We're gonna move it backwards on this so that way it balances to the rear. Just a couple blocks of wood, real simple stuff. The nuts already removed, I should be able to just push the axle 
axle out. There it is. Alright, there's those nasty bearings. These are real chunky feeling. That one's seized. Okay, well, let's get them replaced. And yeah, there's a little jizz on this tire still. That's because uh, when I was over at D&D Cycles, locally here, I had the valve stems replaced because they were leaking pretty badly. Which is the reason why uh, I never put this thing back together. I just put it on the back burner and forgot about it. Anyways, since it needs the bearings, it needs valve stems, we'll just do it all at the same time. This blind hole bearing puller came in uh, <laughs> great use many times over the years for pulling out a lot of motorcycle wheel bearings. Oops. Need to tighten it a little bit more. Alright. One slide hammer. Slide hammer. Oh! Swing and a miss. Didn't tighten it enough. I think I might need to put a wrench on this. Yeah, all right. Just because. Probably not on there long enough, but and it's probably gonna spatter in my face when I pull on it. Ask me how I know. No! <laughs> there it comes. That one had a bit of rust around the outside of it. We'll clean up that bore a little bit. Oh, you know what? That's actually smooth. Yeah, I clean it anyway. There's some dirt in there. And we'll replace that bearing. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's definitely dirty in there. Not rust colored, but like just dirty, black looking, sooty garbage. Yeah, a little bit of grease on the inside of the bore. Once again, you're supposed to put those in dry, duck man. Yeah, tell your wife that. All right. Now when you bump these in, you don't want to hit the center of the bearing. Because if you hit the center, you'll bang up the, uh, the actual rollers or balls into the races and you'll jam it up. Cause the bearing to be dented on the inside and prematurely fail. Alright, that's looking pretty good. Now we gotta pull the other side. even worse than the other ones. Alright. Clean up the inside of that bore. Looks like all the rust was on the bearing and not so much in the bore. Alright. Get us nice and greased up here. Right. In she goes. Try to get them going in straight. 
It was about this time that my neighbor started up a party and there was some really, really loud copyrighted music. So for a section of the video here, you're not going to have any live audio. But we'll hurry through this and we'll jump to the next part. The front wheel is much easier to put on backwards here because there's no sprocket or disc brake on one side or the other. In this case, you want to make sure that the tractor tread is pointing forward on the top. We'll put a little bit of grease on that axle again, and then we'll get it slipped in. And once we've got it started, then we re-grease the rest and then push it the rest of the way through. Well, I went ahead and put on the nut and washer on this side. And then I got to tightening it down. And here's where Duckman had his first mishap. Yeah, I wasn't very happy when that happened. And uh, unfortunately, you guys can't hear the audio because it was a whole lot of copyrighted music. But let's just say that everybody at the party next door stopped and looked at me over the music that was playing. <laughs> I just smiled and waved. What else are you going to do, right? <laughs> well, we went ahead and put that cotter pin in there and we finished up that front wheel. Well, the reason why I had these wheels off of here was because the valve stems were leaking. So I ran them over to D&D Cycles and had the valve stems replaced. Such nice people in there. But uh, when I got home, I realized that I had also lost the master link to the chain, and I don't know where the hell I put it. So I went back to D&D Cycles, and I picked up a master link. Now, D&D Cycles there in Pensacola, they service uh, all kinds of different motorcycles. I mean, pretty much anything that's uh, imported. They touch everything except Harley-Davidson for the most part. So if you're in the local Pensacola Bay Area and you need your motorcycle service, check out D&D Cycles. Uh, this is not something that they paid for. This is just something that I do because they're such wonderful people, and they've been such good friends of mine for such a long time. So check them out. D&D Cycles, Pensacola. Phone number's on the screen. So anyway, we put that master link here in the chain. It is a clip-on style master link. I get so much hell in some of my older motorcycle videos. And I think how to change your motorcycle chain in like 10 minutes or something is one of the most popular chain changing videos up on all of YouTube. And I put that one up myself uh, something like 10, 15 years ago. It's been a long time since I put that one up. And I catch so much hell for using a clip-on master link. I have never had one fail. Never. And it's all about maintenance and how you install the thing. And if you put things together correctly and you check them frequently, you're not going to have a problem. So rivet on master links are really not my taste. And well, when it comes down to it, you can't take them apart when you need to. And digging into my memory on this one, the reason I had to take the chain off on this to begin with is because I couldn't get the wheel off without removing the chain. There just wasn't enough slop in it because the chain was entirely too short and how everything fits together on this bike was just too tight. So, that's the reason for a clip on Master Link. That's my story, and I'm going to keep it, and nobody is ever going to change my mind on that decision. So thank you very much. Now, using these Pook Moped chain adjusters that I installed on here, and that's correct, this uh, bike never had chain adjusters on it. It formerly had a tensioner, and, well, I really don't like tensioners on these bikes, so I did away with it. And I catch a lot of hell also in my chain adjusting video for the method that I use to straighten my chain and to get it in alignment. Now, if you look down the length of a 2x4, you can tell if it's straight or not. And I do the same method while looking at a chain. You don't need to put a straight edge against it. In fact, you may not even be able to put a straight edge against it. So in my case, what I do, look down the length of the chain, and you'll see if it's out of alignment. Simply make your adjustments from there, get that chain tensioned up good enough, and then tighten down that wheel. It really is that simple, you guys. You don't need to overcomplicate things, and I don't know why people down in my video comments of my chain-changing videos say all the silly nonsense. <laughs> I've been doing this for years, and I can do a lot of it by feel anymore. I don't need a whole lot of weird or special tools. I can do it just by looking at it. Yes, that's right. Well, the old seat on the Doodle Bastard was in some pretty bad shape, so I went up on eBay and I bought one that was in better shape. Check this out, you guys. Look at that. See? Looks good, doesn't it? No, I kid you. This is a piece of crap. I actually got one brand new for a surprise deal. It actually was only about $30. And uh, last time I had looked, they were something like $89. And I wasn't about to buy one for that price. For $30, bucks, I don't have a problem with that at all. In fact, I don't even think it was $30. Bucks. I think it was like $25. But either way, I'm very, very pleased. It's a little tricky to get this seat bolted on on account that there's just no room underneath it to put your tools. I did manage to get the nuts on there, however, and using a 10mm uh, socket with an extension, I could get them turned and get them tight. So this here actually worked out pretty good. 
Now we're putting the battery back in. This battery has actually been sitting on my battery tender for something like 14 months. The battery tender was a gift from one of my YouTube subscribers. You know, thank you, Basil, for that. I really do appreciate it. Um, it's going to be a good test to see if these battery tenders actually do the job, and we'll see if this uh, battery does what it's supposed to do. But anyway, I had to put the battery back together in there. I had to clean a lot of uh, tarnished electrical connections. There were some weird problems where I was getting 12 volts at the starter, but the starter wasn't turning at all. And when I hotwired the starter directly to the battery, it would crank. So it, it made no sense to me at all what was going on until I realized all the battery connections were just, you know, rusted, crusty, just nasty from uh, the hurricane that just soaked this poor bike out there in the weather and just tossed it across the yard. It, uh, it was not in good shape, not at all, but I can get it fixed, so we'll see what happens here. Well, the electrical all seemed to be in order, so the only thing that's left is to add gas to it. Now, this turned out to be one hell of a problem. And we're going to get into that here in this video. But this gas can was sitting out in the yard for a while. And it's actually the very same gas can that I brought back from my dad's house. Now, I lost my dad almost a year and a half ago. And this gas is actually something he had at his house prior to him having passed. So this fuel has been around for quite a long time. So, yeah, it's probably not the best gas. But because this can looks exactly like my other can, I got them mixed up. But anyway, the gas can was sitting out in the yard during Hurricane Sally. And, uh... That caused an awful lot of water to get in the gas can, which I did not realize. Not to mention the gas wasn't in good shape either. So, we had some problems. But none of that mattered anyway, because the gas tank on the Doodle Bastard started to leak. And I forgot, that was actually a problem that I had after Hurricane Sally. I think from when the bike got tossed around, it uh, caused some of the welds to the tank to uh, get stressed and cause a little hairline fracture or something someplace. So I figured it was time to pull that tank off and get this thing sealed up quickly because the temperature is supposed to plummet tonight and that tank sealer does not dry in cold weather. So I pulled the tank on off of there and we got started. Well you guys have seen me seal up a gas tank before, in fact this very same one about two years ago. Uh, the first thing that I had to do was just get it absolutely dry and it was real simple to do that. Just uh, get all the gas out of it, let it sit for about an hour or so, then I splashed some acetone in it, shook it up, and dumped it out really fast. This red coat tank sealant that I use is actually, um, it's sensitive to acetone so you can't leave a whole lot on it very long. So I had to dump it out immediately, but what it does do is it loosens up the existing red coat that's inside of the tank and also gets the gasoline out of the way. Now at this point I dumped the new red coat in, shook that tank up really, really good, dumped it back out, and the process was finished. What was really important this time though is I had to get that thing dry before the temperature dropped. And uh, after a little bit of reading I found it's real easy to get this thing to dry, you just have to get the air to circulate inside that tank. And lo and behold, a compressor fitting just happened to fit on the bottom of this gas tank. So I let it sit in the vise there with the compressor just barely hissing into it for about an hour. And after an hour, that thing was dry. And like the instructions say, if the stink goes away, then that means that tank is ready to use. Well, I went ahead and started rescrewing in the fittings using some fuel impervious Teflon tape. This is the right stuff to use here. Don't go using the stuff that you're supposed to use on your plumbing around the house. I got that set up there and I started pulling my fuel lines back through. Once I got the fuel lines snaked through the frame properly, we started running the bolts back through the gas tank. Now the situation is still the same as when I mounted the seat. Those bolts are incredibly hard to get to and gravity is not your friend. Well, we managed to get everything reassembled and this time I poured gas from the good gas can by process of elimination, of course, since we know the old can had water in it. And despite me not being a fool, somebody on YouTube will make a fool of themselves by suggesting that I didn't check the oil before I decided to test run this thing. <laughs> Here you go, you guys. Well, I guess we should go ahead and give it a test start. Let's see what happens. Thank you. 
Tyrone next door decided I was having too much fun and wanted to bring out his grandson's go-kart. And not for his grandson, but for him to ride. <laughs> he challenged me to a race. Let's see what happens here. This is gonna be good. <laughs> now we got a race. Well, as I said, the neighborhood continues to get noisier and noisier. <laughs> well, I was out having a ride on this. Tyrone over there decided to take out the go-kart, and it made a ton of smoke when he did, and uh, we weren't sure what was wrong with it, and every time he got on the throttle, it was acting worse and worse and worse. Finally, we figured out the crankcase was full of water, and all that oil was coming out the breather tube up into the carburetor there. Um, we just drained it, cleaned it up, put fresh oil in it, it should be okay from here out. It's a go-kart, you know, after all. <laughs> if it happened to the Z, I would probably cycle some fresh oil through it multiple times. But you can see the smoke already went away. I mean, this thing was thick, white clouds of smoke. You couldn't hardly see a damn thing. Well, they're doing their thing. We're gonna do our thing. And maybe, maybe we'll get a race. I guess we'll see what's gonna happen here. Well, after all that nonsense, it just stalled, and I looked in the gas tank, and it's empty. <laughs> it was full, of course, when I gave it back to him on uh, Christmas Day. But since Christmas, they've, uh, the whole family's ridden it around a lot, so they really enjoyed it, but it's time for gas. There you go. That's easy enough. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of surprised. I looked in there, and it was nothing. Oh, don't miss. <laughs> yeah, got that under control. All right, back up and running. Still blowing a little bit of smoke, but it's gonna. I mean, there's oil in places there's not supposed to be oil. <laughs> a couple laps up and down the street, it'll blow out. Shouldn't be a problem at all. Neither one of us are running quite 100%. I need a little bit of tuning, and Tyrone still needs to blow the rest of the oil out of that thing. <laughs> well, this is going to be fun, so here we go. really choppy at higher RPMs, which I found out later after I wound up pushing it home, because yes, it stalled at the end of the street. Uh, it turned out I had a cracked spark plug cap, you know, of all things. It's just cracked, it's not sitting down on the spark plug as tight as it should be, and uh, when you get the revs and the vibrations up, it bounces around a little bit, and that's when it misfires. If I step on it with my right foot, however, and hold it down, if it doesn't shock me through the sole of my shoe, which, uh, yeah, that got me pretty good a couple times, it was rather remarkable that it went through that much rubber and insulation. But nonetheless, it would run a whole lot better, so I gotta get a new spark plug cap for the little bastard. Well, it's another few dollars after all the money that I've spent getting this thing running this time around. <laughs> Anyways, another video to follow. Licky, likey, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle belly so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you next time.